Hello, I'm Ranger Tim, and welcome to Fresh Pond. Fresh Pond is the city of Cambridge's active drinking water supply. Every single day, 8 to 14 million gallons is drawn from this reservoir and processed by the Cambridge Water Department. The Water Department employs rangers, as well as engineers, chemists, and biologists to ensure that your drinking water arrives to your house safe and sound. Fresh Pond Reservation is a large open green space maintained specifically for the health of the drinking water. In doing so, we protect several habitats, including many wetlands. Water is the universal life giver for our planet Earth. Humans depend on it, as do many animals. We're going to take a look into the life of two special animals whose lives depend on access to fresh water. Come follow me, let's go. This is Black's Nook, one of my favorite places at Fresh Pond Reservation. This small pond next to Fresh Pond Reservoir is accessible to the public for wildlife observation, nature study, and quiet contemplation. Although it may be quiet in the winter, every spring and summer these waters explode into life. And when it's hopping with excitement, one of the animals that you can see in here is the American Bullfrog. Frogs are amphibians, not reptiles, and amphibians have a special connection to water. Bullfrogs can live 8 to 10 years in the wild, and at Black's Nook, they are a predator. Do you see that circle behind this frog's eye? That's its ear. Frogs have their eardrums on the outside of their head, instead of within an ear canal, like us humans. Although you may not place them in the same category as lions and tigers, Frogs are carnivores, a special type of meat eater known as an insectivore. They hunt pond waters for all types of bugs and insects. Unlike many lakes where most life occurs swimming in the water, the majority of life in a pond can be found at the very bottom. This is the muck layer. Muck is made up of plant and animal matter that settle to the bottom. Some animals eat the actual muck, and some live and hunt here. Every single square foot of muck in Black's Nook has life in it, and it's the frog's job to hunt these waters. Welcome to the laboratory. This is where our water department scientists analyze water quality. I thought it would be fun to figure out how much frog food we can find in one bucket of muck. Come on, let's check this out. I'm doing my best here to be a frog on the lookout for my next meal. This isn't a lot of muck, but I hope it's fruitful. I'm doing this in a clean environment with tools, but for most people, this is an outdoor activity. If you can find a body of water that isn't part of a protected drinking water supply. It's worth noting that when I'm finished, every last bit of muck and water will be returned to the same exact spot I took it from. It's time to see what we found. This is a dragonfly nymph, another predator. It will sprout wings after years of living underwater. This is a damselfly nymph, similar to the dragonfly. Do you see the tails it has? Those are gill plates to help it breathe. Here we have a snail. These are all over our native ponds. This strange animal is a leech. They live off of the blood of larger animals, and this wasn't the only leech I found in my bucket as if you needed another reason to not go swimming at Black's Nook. And did I mention that they can also swim? These are water isopods, not an insect, but a crustacean. They also have gill plates, and they eat the dead leaves in the muck layer. Here is another crustacean known as a scud. This is a freshwater relative of the shrimp. As you watch frogs from the boardwalk, you may notice them moving their throats. This is how they breathe. As humans, we have simple two-stage breathing, in and out. We can do this thanks to our diaphragm, a muscle that pumps our lungs. Frogs don't have a diaphragm, so instead they need to do four-stage breathing. Their throat muscles act as an in-between step while breathing in and breathing out. This means that they take only one breath when they pump their throats twice. Before handling a frog, I like to make sure that my hands are clean. 
I use the water from the frog's home environment, as well as gloves, to make sure my hands are clean. Our hands contain many different things, contaminants such as salts and oils that may be normal for our skin, but for a frog are very different. Frogs, just like their ears, their eyes, their lungs, their skin is very different from our own. We went over how a frog eats, but how does a frog drink? The answer is their skin. Let's check out a frog. Unlike the dry and scaly reptiles, frogs and the amphibians have smooth and wet skin that have a special ability. Their skin is able to absorb oxygen and water, among other things, from their environment around them. Allowing air and water to freely enter their blood supply is an advantage to save energy, but it also makes them more susceptible to being poisoned by pollution. Another cost to this superpower, if the frog's skin dries completely out, it can die of dehydration. Because of this, and to avoid predators, bullfrogs are usually only one powerful hop away from the water. Water is not only the source of the frog's food and safety, but it's crucial to their health, and it's where they begin life. Without legs, without lungs, and with a tail, a bullfrog is born as a tadpole. This tadpole is 10 months old. It was born last summer, spent last winter under the ice, and by the end of this summer, it will be a bullfrog. Although they grow to a large size, when you're a tadpole, you're not a predator. You are prey. With predators such as the heron, various fish, and the painted turtle, most tadpoles don't make it to adulthood. With no bones or other protection, tadpoles need to rely on their camouflage and quick getaway. These tadpoles need to survive this final summer in order to become a frog. When any animal changes forms, it undergoes metamorphosis. There are two types of metamorphosis in the animal kingdom, complete and incomplete. Complete metamorphosis is when there is one major step in the transformation. We're familiar with this in the example of a caterpillar turning into a butterfly. But a tadpole does not form a pupa and become a frog overnight it undergoes a series of smaller transformations by incomplete metamorphosis. To take a closer look into the process of incomplete metamorphosis, let's follow the life cycle of one of the bullfrog's relatives, also found here at Fresh Pond. Do you hear that? This sound floods Lusitania Meadow every April. This is the maiden call of the American toad. The order of frogs is full of many different families. The true frogs, like the American bullfrog, the tree frogs, like the spring peeper, and the true toads, like the American toad. Frogs and toads share most of the same basic biology. Can you see the similarities? One difference between frogs and toads is their skin. A toad's back is covered by warty bumps, Many of these are special glands that prevent the toad's skin from drying out completely. There are two other special glands. These paratoid glands secrete bufotoxin, a mild poison that deters predators from eating the toad. These adaptations help toads to be away from water for extended periods of time. Just like the bullfrog, toads are insectivores. They hunt along the damp forest floor for crickets, ants, beetles, and small spiders. Their bufotoxin prevents many predators from hunting the toad, but not all. Some, like the garter snake, are immune to the poison. Some smarter animals, like the raccoon and the crow, only eat the bottom, non-poisonous portion of the toad. Others that are more nimble, like this red-tailed hawk, find other ways. Birds of prey usually eat the small prey whole, bones and all. This hawk is careful to remove the toad's poisonous skin before eating, and the skin will be the only thing that's left behind when this hawk flies away. Spring is an exceptionally vulnerable season for the toad, because at this time every year, they sing and make their return to the water. Just like bullfrogs, toads also begin life in the water as tadpoles. Because of this, the female toads need to lay their eggs in the water, and it's the male toad's job to find the eggs and fertilize them. 
Frogs and toads have found a clever way around this by engaging in amplexus, which is Latin for the embrace. The male toad will stick his hands under the female's armpit and ride her around piggyback until she's ready to lay her eggs. This sometimes takes days. When she lays her eggs, the male will be the first to know, and he will be the first to fertilize. This is their first, only, and last act as parents. They leave their eggs in the wetland and continue their everyday lives until next April. Another difference between frogs and toads is their eggs. Toads lay over 1,000 eggs in a long egg strand, and frogs lay the same amount of eggs in a large egg mass. Both are protected by a clear, jelly-like substance that is not edible to predators. Birds and reptiles have shells to hold moisture in. Amphibians don't need eggshells because they're already in water. The jelly-like substance absorbs water and floats the eggs near the surface, where there is the most sunlight warmth and oxygen. Over the next two days, the jelly collects debris and begins to grow a green slime. This is very important because when the black embryos uncurl and wriggle out to freedom as a tadpole, they are very weak and need an easy meal. Staying together near their birth site, they slowly clean up the green slime and debris. Hi there! I'm back in the laboratory because I wanted to take a closer look at what those tadpoles were really eating. Upon inspection, I found algae. This is a type of microscopic plant. This means that not only do tadpoles have gills instead of lungs, they are herbivores instead of carnivores. There are a lot of obstacles to overcome in order to become toads. For being in the same stage of life, toad tadpoles are much smaller than bullfrog tadpoles. This makes them much more susceptible to more predators, like small fish. These toads I'm following are avoiding fish by laying their eggs in a wetland that dries up by the end of every summer. This means that less predators will be there, and it also means that the tadpoles are now in a race against time to grow legs and leave the water. Over the next two weeks, the toad tadpoles increase in size and increase in appetite. They begin to move from algae and microscopic plants to macroscopic plants like pond weeds. Before the third week has passed, the first small transformation in the process of incomplete metamorphosis occurs. Unbeknownst to the tadpole, a small bump begins to grow underneath the tail. Over the next day or two, this bump splits and begins to form toes. Over the next week, the tadpoles continue to voraciously eat, and their legs will slowly take form. As the incomplete metamorphosis continues, bones begin forming in the tadpole. You can see that at this point, a growing skull creates a frog-like face on the tadpole. Small bumps on either side start forming now, too. These will become the toad's front legs. This process occurs over the next two days, and not all tadpoles grow at the same rate. The tadpole has now completed its toad legs, but it still has a rounded tadpole body and tail. As its body changes to look more toad-like, another change is going on in this tadpole. It is slowly getting harder to breathe underwater. As their gills disappear, it becomes possible that a tadpole can drown. It gasps the water, and it absorbs oxygen through its skin. Their legs are very weak, and it's at this point that tadpoles prefer shallow areas where they can rest in the water and access fresh air. At this stage in their metamorphosis with working lungs and a tail, they are no longer considered tadpoles. They are toadlets, froglets for the bullfrog. Can you see the toad skin forming? There are two major changes that need to happen in order to go from a toadlet to a toad. They must lose their tail, and they must become carnivores. Right now, as a toadlet, the tadpole herbivore stomach is transforming into a toad carnivore stomach. At this point, they don't eat. Instead, they slowly absorb their tails for extra energy until it's short and gone. 
Without a tail, they are no longer toadlets. They are now young toads. They have completed their last step of incomplete metamorphosis and now take trips out of the water hunting for small spiders and ants. On their second birthday, they will return to their wetland and continue this cycle. Thanks for coming along with me through this journey at Fresh Pond Reservation. I hope you learned a couple new things about our amphibian friends. There are just a few things that I want you to remember. If anything happens to these temporary wetlands and meadows, the toads will have nowhere to reproduce next year. And whatever goes into this water goes into a bullfrog's body and that this reservoir in West Cambridge supplies the drinking water for the entire city.